my name is Marty Luffin, and I'm sitting here with probably one of the most treasured mementos we've had donated to the Historical Society in a long time. You want to introduce yourself? Yes, my name is Bill Stickley, and I'm the, uh, one of the second great grandsons of this is uh, Captain George Crossway Ridley, and um, we finally got a good copy of the. Uh, of his portrait. There had been available a smaller version, lower um, lower resolution that you couldn't, if you tried to blow it up, you couldn't really see him well. And uh, I was finally able to get uh, uh, through the Sons of the Confederacy. I met with a, with a collector and got this uh, a better, much better version. In fact, in this version here, you can even clearly see that uh, that he, even though the image is black and white, you can clearly see that he had beautiful, clear blue eyes, and uh, they show up in the photo. Uh, he's definitely a very handsome man. Yes. Now, are you from Rutherford County, and he's from Rutherford County? No, he, he's, he is from Rutherford County. Um, I'm, um, I've lived my whole life in uh, Michigan, and uh, what happened in and how I'm tied to him is, is uh, his, uh, his son, uh, uh, Wellborn, um, is, is my uh, great, great, or my great grandfather. And um, um, he was, um, he was originally here from uh, Murfreesboro, but um, um, along about uh, uh, somewhere just after 1900, he moved from, uh, they he had, a, he had a store here, and um, business did, was not doing well. And um, so the auto companies, Henry Ford opened new plants in Detroit, and uh, they decided that that would be um, a better environment to run the store. So they left, uh, left Murfreesboro and uh, moved to Detroit, and he opened a store down the street from, um, Henry Ford's uh, car plant, and that's that's how my part of the family ended up in, in Michigan. Well, this is very interesting. Now, uh, if I recollect, I'm, I don't know for sure, but is this the Ridley that they were going to hang? No, that was um, that was uh, uh, George's uh, youngest brother, Charles, and. Um, and al although at that time Charles was not um, um, officially a member of uh, the Confederate Army, um, all the rest of the brothers were uh, George and uh, Broadfield and uh, Jerome. Um, but Charles was being the youngest. He was, uh, and I believe at the time that this took place, um, I believe Charles was. Uh, um, he was either 14 or 15 years old. He was definitely a teenager. Yes. Yeah. And they, yeah, and, uh, now, he, he escaped being hung. Yes. What? What they, well, what they did is they, uh, he was uh, captured, um, um, actually not right in town, but out near to where the, um, the Fairmont Plantation was. That was the plantation of his, um, his father. Um, now, where, where was the Fairmont Plantation? The Fla Fairmont Plantation is is right, the closest geographical thing to explain is right where the split of the East and West Stones River is near where, um, if you're familiar with where Old Jefferson is, yes. the, the house for the plantation was, was just a few hundred yards um, east of where, the, where Old Jefferson was where the split of the East and West Stones River is, and the, the house was on the, the highest point there because of, uh, uh, they had occasional flooding. The ground is somewhat rolling. The house was on the highest point, and uh, now unfortunately the house was burned um, in the war, and with many of the family members were actually in the house when, uh, when the Federals started it on fire. Um, but today, the, uh, the limestone foundation for the house is, is still there, and I, I have visited it um, several times. It's, uh, 
Um, okay, we'll the, the members of the house that were in the house when they started fire, did they, were they able to get out? Well, the, the um, Bromfield's um, uh, mother-in-law um, was, was bedridden at the time. And they had difficulty um, with that. And subsequent to, to that, she she did. Uh, she uh, she perished in the fire. Well, not in the fire, but as a result of uh, she had to be hauled down the. She was in an upstairs uh, bedroom and had to be hauled down and out um, because the house was burning. Okay. Okay. Now over there uh, where the house was, I think at one time there was a hotel over there prior to the Civil War, and it, it was close to the plantation. Okay. And it was, uh, I still have, I have some pictures that you can, you can yes. seriously see, that you can see where the hotel once stood too. It's yes. Down now, of course. So that's vacant land over there. You know why it's vacant land today? Well, the, the, the property eventually was all uh, uh, taken by the Army Corps of Engineers um, because the plan that they made was they were going to, um, and they subsequently did, build a dam across the uh, uh, Stones River to create the, the recreation area there and make the, widen the river and make it essentially a, a, a lake. Now, what had happened, and the reason that they took everything down was because in, in the original plan, when they did the grading, they thought that that whole area, including the area where the foundation of the house was and by, and by the way just 75 feet from the house was the uh, uh, Ridley uh, family cemetery and um, all of that was moved all of the the well we're still not sure we believe that all but one of the graves was moved to Evergreen Cemetery this would have been in like 1961 62 in that era um, but it was all of that was scheduled to be underwater, and um, and I think they didn't. The uh, Corps of Engineer, when they were assessing it, they didn't take into consideration all the caves that were there. Exactly. And then when they did dam it up, and they were expecting the land to flood, the water went in the caves. Yes. And so and, the land. And, and actually, the other thing with the caves. Now here's what's interesting about it, and the answer did not come till. A hundred years later after the initial thing when the Federals came to burn the house they actually I, I don't believe that the original intention was simply to burn the house what they were doing is that there was a reward was being offered for Bromfield senior um, because he was considered the Chancellor of, uh, uh, of, the, of the Army of Tennessee and uh, they were they were looking to capture him and when they came to find him um, and even though they, they sent, um, there were several thousand troops that were, that were sent to find him and they did not find him. We believe what happened was um, he probably had knowledge because that cave was on his land. Exactly. And uh, we believe that what happened is he, he escaped to the cave and therefore they, they, the Federals never did find and capture him. That cave came out close to the intersection of Murfreesboro Road and Hobson Pike. Yes. There, there's a, um, um, I don't know what the proper term, but he sells trees and mulch and everything like that. And the cave that you're referring to, it, it probably, I believe, comes out right there behind the house. Of, of where, And so he was able to get on Murfreesboro Pike and go to a safe haven from yeah. there. Yes. Now, getting back to what we were talking about a while ago, um, the hanging. Yes. Um, they, so, they were fixing to have the hanging. So what stopped? So Charles was uh, captured, and he was charged with being a, a bushwhacker, um, for which was not unusual at the time. The, the They would have a summer, basically a summary trial, and it would result in him being hung. Um, he was captured along with, uh, I believe that there was 12, 12 others that were captured. Now the interesting thing is, is that uh, the, the courthouse where Bromfield Sr. was, was the, the, the judge there, um, was actually converted and on the second floor, 
um, it was being used as a, a, a jail and Charles was being held in his, basically his father's courtroom as a jail and was scheduled to be hung the next morning. Um, they, I believe they were in the process of, of uh, building a gallows outside the courthouse. And um, so, but the plan didn't go off as how they thought it would, would happen is we had uh, uh, Nathan Bedford Forrest um, uh, through his wiles and cunning um, with a very small group of troops captured and was able to obtain the surrender of, uh, of nearly 3,000 Federals. And uh, by doing that, he was able to go back and re retake the, uh, the, the courthouse from the, the, the Federals have been using as their local headquarters. Um, he retook that and uh, as a result, Charles was, was, uh, was free. Yeah, he was exonerated from being hung. Yes. Thanks to General Nathan Bedford Forrest. Now I think <clears throat> that the um, story you're referring to here, I think in, in his um, historical footnotes, that was probably one of the greatest accomplishments of his, his coups that had taken over 3,000 troops with a small band of men. Yes. And he has was, been recognized for that. Was, I mean, even today, that would just be nothing short of amazing. Yeah, it was. And he, he, was, he did strategy. He, had, he was a tremendous strategician. But that, I think, went down in history as one of his greatest coups. And, and saving the original. Yes. Your ancestors. Yes, actually, in in the in the end, what was unusual was that uh, um, all five brothers um, survived um, through the through the war. Have you ever thought about the consequences, though, of any one of the brothers that were hung or were shot or were killed? You may not be here talking to me right now. Well, that's that's possible. And the other thing that uh, actually one of the quests that I'm on right now is. Uh, uh, one of the family members, we've not been able to account for um, her grave, and uh, this would be uh, a, a sister of uh, 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 George and Charles, um, and her name was Elizabeth. She was better known as, as Betty. She ran a, uh, a small school there um, ad adjacent to the, to the uh, plantation in uh, Old Jefferson, and um, what happened was uh, so this was still during during the war. Um, uh, she fell ill and, um, and 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 passed away. Now the other thing that I was we've we've looked for because the the rest of the graves of the Ridley family had like I said in the '60s were all uh, transferred and they they were reburied at Evergreen Cemetery and. Uh, um, the one grave that we've not been able to account for. Now, one other thing is different, is George, after the war, um, grew disenchanted with how things were going during Reconstruction and things, and he subsequently moved to, uh, to Texas, and uh, he spent the rest of his life in, uh, in Texas. And his, and his, I've recently visited his grave. He's, he's, no, he's buried in Texas. But the most of the other members of the family are uh, are buried in uh, Evergreen Cemetery. Now, the one exception and the one grave that we've not been able to account for is Elizabeth or or Betty Ridley's. Okay. And, um, are you aware that there's a Ridley graveyard across the road from the Sam Davis home? No, I'm not. I'll be glad to share that information with okay. you. This got, uh, actually it was where uh, the Ridleys at the time allowed Sam Dave's uh, body to be buried there until he could be uh, removed and, and taken over to the home. Okay. But there's probably about five or six Ridleys and they go back to the early 1800s in that graveyard. Okay. But I'd be glad to show you where that is. I All right. You want to see it. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Well, actually, the other thing that I am aware of with uh, is that um, uh, Sam, the home where Sam Davis lived, was actually sold to Sam Davis's uh, parents um, by a Ridley. I believe it was Moses Ridley. Moses. Sold, sold them the, the 
house and property. Well, I was just really so the, the family, yeah. the plantation. Right. Okay. Well, thank you, sir. This has been a most interesting conversation. Yes, thank you. Appreciate it a lot.